Hey, everybody. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, welcome to the seventh recap for Comic Art Live. We've been doing this for three years now. The seventh show is almost in the books. We've got two more hours to go until the uh, virtual doors close on this latest rendition of uh, our virtual show. So it's, uh, you know, we can talk about the, uh, you know, the ugly, the bad and the good. Probably in that order is best to go, uh, I think, for me, as far as how the show has gone so far. But I do welcome thoughts from everybody as uh, we go through this. But uh, good evening, Sydney and Murdoch, Jeff Wedding, Bronze is Gold, Margaret Lee, Je Jason, Mar lots of people in the chat. I appreciate that. Tom McDonald, Sam Maroney, Nick Barucci, and all the rest. And Marcus Way. How can I forget you, Marcus? Mingle and tingle. So... Yeah, let's uh, we can dive into a few things. But I do want to, you know, some thanks go out to people who've helped me uh, the last several days. Uh, of course, Maureen would be number one. If it wasn't for Maureen, for Maureen we wouldn't uh, have uh, had as a successful show as uh, I think we uh, have, we have. Things are still kind of shaking out, but uh, I'm glad Maureen was here. I mean, some of the problems were created by us, but uh, without Maureen's help and being here, she. Uh, we would have had a lot better, a lot more worse of a show than what we ended up with. But uh, beyond that, I have to thank both Ken and Jeff from 4C. They managed a couple panels for me. We talked a lot in the, la in the week leading up to the uh, show as well. And, uh, you know, again, I just appreciate their help. I mean, I, I heard some people say that the Wheel of Deals panel was everybody's favorite this weekend. So I don't mind that. I think that's great. I think we need more. Uh, you know, people coming in and wanting to do their own things here. And, and uh, as we saw today with Larry, Larry hosting the collector conversation that went over really well too. So yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that my takeaways from this is, you know, we've always focused on this as strictly uh, trying to make it like a, uh, you know, like a real con and the, and the panels have always kind of followed that. We've always tried focusing exclusively on, um, you know, artist conversations and those things. And those are fun. I like having those uh, as part of the show. But I, I think like we've seen with the two panels we did today, the Collector Conversation and Dino's Stellar Gems show, I think we can kind of come up with some of our own programming that, uh, you know, ties into the show really well. So I also wanted to thank Larry and Dino for going out of their way to help make the the weekend fun and enjoyable. And, uh, you know, again, I couldn't do it without uh, without them and everybody else, all of you pulling together to make the show uh, a success. So uh, just reading through some of the comments, Murdoch says he picked up uh, five pieces, 1600 spent. Uh, it's been a fun two days. That's good. Um, I, you know, I've heard from a lot of people that they've picked up a few pieces. I think if you watch the collector conversation, I thought that that was one of the uh, you know things that came out of that was that most everyone who was there to buy found a fair number of deals, which was which was good. I really didn't get a chance to look at too much in the hall until late Saturday afternoon, but uh, but I kind of felt the same way. I think you know, for whatever reason, you know, there, there were some decent deals out there and uh, fairly priced stuff. I mean, a lot of overpriced things as well, but, but by and large, I mean, the stats kind of have ended up at a place where, you know, I was really worried initially, but at the end of uh, things, it looks like we're going to have probably a close to a 10% sell rate, which is pretty much average. Uh, you know, I can tell you that, um, we had $18 million in artwork brought to the show just at uh, 6,500 pieces available. So, you know, that, that, that was a record. The total of uh, value on the artwork that was presented, that was a record at 18 million. Um, the sales figures as they stand right now, we are at $980,000 in sales. And I think that's, that's actually a little higher than we were at this time last year, as uh, the show was uh, kind of winding down, we're at 581 sales. So my guess is we'll probably end up, like I say, at a 10% sell rate and uh, somewhere in that 1.3 to $1.4 million in sales. So that's that's going to be pretty solid at the end of the day. As you know, a lot of people don't even record their sales. So it, it does make it a bit uh, hard to gauge on things. I was in a couple of uh, booths today where they just wrote sold in the title. So if somebody went back to edit the their piece uh, so that they could change the title to have the word sold in it, they could have just changed that radio, you know, the drop down box from for sale to sold and it would have got it into our uh, our tracking. But a lot of people don't don't know that it's a it's a field that they're not familiar with, especially on calf. So it's, uh, you know, something we're going to need to do a better job of educating our exhibitors going into these things so that they know how to best 
uh, you know, flag things, set things up, uh, re retarget. Um, oh, Mr. Sideshow Bob, thank you. Uh, I, I'm glad to hear that. A couple of good sales. I'm uh, sincerely pleased, Bob. Thank you for that. Um, Margaret says uh, the uh, most expensive piece listed as sold was $27,500. And, and that's kind of interesting too, Margaret, because as many people know, the uh, the last show was very similar to that. I think the highest selling piece was somewhere around you know the mid 40s and we still reached that uh the same you know 1.2 1.3 million dollars in sales last time but you know it was like the third the fourth and the fifth shows that we did in uh throughout 2021 and early 2022 you know those shows all had a six figure sale in them to get us to that 1.5 million mark and uh you know when you don't have a six figure sale it, it is definitely a little bit more difficult to reach the those lofty goals <laughs> and levels that we were able to reach in the past. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Jason. And uh, let's see, what did you say, Rich? Didn't want to buy anything. Money's too tight, but I did find some very good deals that had me guessing. And that's good. The thing is, as long as the deals are there, I mean, I think that gives us all uh, something to look forward to, right? I mean, a, a lot of people are tightening their belts a bit and, um, you know, it's it's understandable. But at least the numbers kind of show me that, uh, you know, we're still able to deliver when it comes to the, the sales. We certainly had the same uh, site traffic. We're always pretty consistent there. We had 20,000 people come through the, uh, you know, through the site on Saturday and Sunday. So a solid attendance, which was really good. Um, what we, you know, we'll just talk about the ugly, right? The ugly was... Uh, you know, and this was, uh, of course, it hit the premium members the worst. Was that on Saturday we 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 had a uh, a mistake in our in our programming, something we had overlooked, and it, nothing serious. But at the end of the day, we we stored dates and times as part of like booth lock times and uh, you know show opening times, show close times, all those sorts of things that are in are stored as part of the show, so that the things just happen automatically. I don't have to flip a switch. Well, th there was a, uh, unfortunately, we stored some of the dates, two very important dates in a separate table. And those two very important dates defined what the, when the Saturday art drop and the Sunday art drop could be viewed by uh, the public. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird the way we did it, but that's how we did it. And the problem was we didn't update them from November. So the dates were still set to November 13th and 14th for the two days. And of course, we're in May, so we're in the future. So what happened when the show opened on Saturday at 11 was all 6,500 pieces all got released at the same time. So there were people who were getting previews of the Sunday items, which they shouldn't have been able to do. But nobody told me for the first half hour, but it was causing problems with the programming uh, you know, because it's just, it just wasn't meant to work like that. And uh, uh yeah, I didn't see that rich, but so at the end of the day, that was what was going on in those first 30 minutes. And for me, the, the, the problem is, is that as a super admin, I actually see everybody's Saturday and Sunday drop when I am on the site. So I didn't notice anything wrong. I, I, I always see everything. I, I don't know. Maureen programmed it that way and I just get to see everything. So it didn't look out of, out of the ordinary at all. I got a text from Jiggy about uh, 1130 a.m. And he said that because trust me, that the, the 30 minutes, I mean, we were freaking out. We we're like, why is things are running slow? Uh, something, you know, just is amiss and we could not figure it out. And so Jiggy texted me that and I like, there's no way it's not possible. It's worked fine for the last uh, ever since we implemented a Sunday drop from the second show. So we had five shows in a row that didn't have an issue. Well, I went over to Jiggy's booth and sure enough, all of his Sunday stuff was there. I went in, uh, I was logged in as uh, uh, a no, I wasn't logged into anything. I went there as a regular user who uh, who couldn't. It, but bottom line, anyway, uh, that was the issue, and it just caused a whole lot of problems. And it and it was kind of hard to recover from it initially because it caused some problems on the database server. That you know you can't. I'm not going to stop and like recycle everything on on the database. So you know after about 45 minutes, everything was much better. But those first five minutes were awful. And, uh, you know, I think it, the site generated for me about 200 errors in the first five minutes. But after that, it was just slow going. And uh, and it was just, again, hard to recover from. But um, 
you know, jiggy for the win. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's, you know, it's funny. I mean, all of you were seeing it, but I mean, I mean, but the cool thing was for you guys is that uh, premium members, you were seeing the Sunday art drop at the same time. So, I mean, I, I figure, and you're busy, right? You're also trying to hit the site so you can see the artwork to buy. The last thing on your mind is to say, Bill, I think we can see the Sunday stuff. All <laughs> right. Um, at any rate, so we got through that, but in that, in the 30 minutes where we were frantic trying to figure out what the problems wa were, one, Maureen made a change on the search uh, page as a, as a test, trying to experiment with something. And we ended up uh, breaking something such that when the 11 o'clock drop for Sunday happened today, the search page was broken for about the first 15 or 16 minutes, where if you set it to the Sunday drop only and then click next, it went back and reverted to Saturday. So then that was broken for a little bit. So those were the two things that really went wrong that uh, we could have controlled and could have done uh, a little bit better. Matt says he couldn't even get in for the first few minutes. You know, I, I had a few people tell me that, but you know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I'm in Florida on uh, a regular, regular connection. You know, my servers are in Ohio. I was never on you know, I was always able to be on the server and it's, you know, so it's, but it's not like I have any kind of uh, special access. So I did hear, you know, a few people said they couldn't get to the site, but I, uh, I didn't see that part. I'm sorry if I ruined your your con kind of experience a little bit there, Jason. I know you're just kidding, but uh, but I did hear that, man. And I and I, I just can honestly say it, it didn't uh, work. You know, happen like that to me at all. So it's peculiar for some people who couldn't. But the thing is, at the end of the day, uh, it did work itself out after the first five minutes. So yeah, and then the search page thing bothered you know bothered me, but uh, obviously it didn't impede anybody at the end of, you know at the end of things. Everybody found stuff that they were looking for. Uh, uh, and Matt says, "You well, I get it, Matt. Um, but I'm sure you know the thing is what worked well was the keyword alerts worked well again. The uh, <laughs> the block Matt more function worked perfectly. Thank you, Fred. You weren't supposed to tell him that. Uh, it's an Ohio Michigan block. Yeah. Um, Jason says he had some issues getting in early too. Uh, yeah. Well, that's just it. I mean, they're one of the." It depended on which link you were following. It, the main impact was on the search page, but even more so still was the exhibitor page. And that's an, that's a route that a lot of people take. The exhibitor page is just going to get overhauled for the next show. That's one of the things that uh, it's always run slow. And the impact on the overall database performance is, is somewhat hampered because the exhibitor page runs slow. And there's, there's lots of different reasons for it. Um, but one of the big ones is just that we started showing those three random pieces on the exhibitor page and the, the larger the show got trying to load the page with 325 exhibitors pulling three random pieces means we're pulling a thousand random images uh, to show on a single page load while we're also running all these separate database queries for all 330 exhibitors. It just was not a wise uh, decision. It worked fine when there were like 200 exhibitors, but 300, and 25 uh, was pushing it to uh, a limit that we, you know, this wasn't, it wasn't meant to do. So I can tell you what we'll probably be doing next time is giving you something more like CAF where you pick the three pieces you want to feature as, uh, you know, for your, your booth, which is actually probably better than random. And that, you know, because those are, we want to show them to give, uh, you know, people who are attending a, an idea of what's in your booth. Well, giving you the control to pick which three pieces you feature as the, you know, the gateway into your booth is probably a wiser decision, it gives you that power. But the problem, the thing is, it will free up all that randomization that we were trying to do behind the scenes, trying to pull three random pieces from everybody's booth. And it's, it's, it's more complicated than that. It was like, if it's on Saturday, I have to only filter on Saturday and make sure that I filter out Sunday. And, you know, it's, again, it was, uh, it worked well when we weren't so busy, but now where we're at, uh, it's, uh, it is very, you know, it's very, evident that we're going to make those changes. And I think that'll be for the better. So the exhibitor pages will look different when the uh, the November iteration of the show is released. Uh, that is, uh, that's for sure. Um, beyond that, you know, I, th I think that th everything sort of went the way it was supposed to. Uh, you know, I, when I look at where, you know, th there's certain things that I want to change and add uh, modifications to the search form and uh, add in some bells and whistles there. But, um, you know, at the, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm content. I'm more content. If the sales weren't as good as they are, I'd be pretty upset that, uh, you know, feeling like what happened at the beginning really is what dragged the sales down or, 
uh, or whatnot. But um, uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat. So uh, well, so you added some, you know, pages and uh, William O says that stuff happens. <laughs> but exactly. I know. I know. But so that, you know, there's still 500 people on the server right now, uh, just on calf and uh, everything is working fine. So that's that's the thing. But again, we, we've got some room to improve on the areas that I've mentioned. So and that'll, that's going to Maureen and I talked after uh, after we fixed things this morning. And and uh, essentially, we're going to kind of dive into this stuff right away. We have a couple other side projects that we're working on, but we've always kind of pushed the comic art live stuff off until like the month before the show. And we tend to forget all the important enhancements we wanted to do from the prior show, even though we have notes, you know, we moved in between the time we had the last show and, and this one, and uh, we couldn't remember all the things that we wanted to add, but uh, you know, we, we made some changes and, uh, and affected some positive things that we wanted to do, but by and large, I do forget most things. So uh, let's see, Jason has a comment uh, above William. Uh, what is that? Uh, I said, not sure if you saw it, but you, can have our oh i saw that yeah i did see that when you mentioned that in the in dino show you know i mean we could you know the thing is is that not all exhibitors come back for the following show so i guess i'd have to look at it and you know we'd have to modify the programming a bit because then it would hide you know uh, exhibitors who aren't there at the fall at the second show so it's possible definitely um let's see here Kavi says uh, that he sold seven pieces and acquired seven. Well, sevens are wild for you, Kavi. That's great. Very successful, fun show from my standpoint. Thanks. That's uh, I'm I'm glad to hear that, Kavi. Um, you know that uh, that is that is perfect. And you know I can tell you the one big thing that we had going into this that was new that we did spend a lot of time on, uh, up you know as part of this show that really didn't affect any of you was uh, working out the, the real time checkout code. And that was something that we beta tested in, uh, well, it was in my booth, but nobody bought anything in my booth. So uh, I didn't get to have any tests to actually go through it, but it was also in the uh, Andy and Veronica Fish's CAF uh, exhibitor booth, uh, comic car live exhibitor booth. And they had, I forget seven or eight sales and everything worked fine. So I will, you know, I, I can see who made the orders and I'm going to probably follow up with the people who bought from Andy and Veronica just to kind of get a feel for, you know, did, did was the process fine? Because we, we made some decisions on how we wanted the checkout flow to go. And, uh, you know, I'm just curious from their standpoint, if it, worked as they expected did it bring them back the calf the way they they wanted you know what could we have done differently thank you ec you can thank uh, well george hodge gave me this so uh you got uh aaron Connolly's, uh you know saber tooth swordsman here and uh george hodge's i think that's george hodge right there without skin uh and then uh, canker of course from matt allison but um but anyway, yes, back to that is that, you know, so that we've got it all, it, it, everything worked with the checkout as it should. So it'll, that'll be something we'll talk a, a bit more about after the show. And, you know, because I don't think it's going to be for everyone. And we need to kind of, I want to find a way to make it work for everybody. But at the end of the day, it may, I think it's going to work very well for artists. It's going to work perfectly fine for dealers. And, uh, and I only say that because the thing is when you, the way the process works today is, uh, you, you basically have to create your own merchant account uh, as if you, you know, like like you can do with PayPal if you're a business account, those sorts of things. You uh, you essentially become uh, a sub merchant beneath our primary account so that it allows us to facilitate uh, the sales for you through Stripe. So it's all it's all secure. It's a, the whole system is built pretty much like PayPal, uh, but with a few more bells and whistles. So, you know, it's something I'll have to, you know probably write out a whole outline on how it'll work and then uh, we'll see who it fits uh, and who it doesn't. But the cool thing is, is that it worked fine. And, uh, you know, judging by, I mean, I've got to, you know, I'll have some follow up with Andy as well, because it looks like that, you know, that uh, Stripe might hold the money for three days or something before they transfer it. But um, I've got to read through uh, a few things there. Uh, Marcus, what did you say? Highest selling piece is Tradmore. That should have at least got a uh, 50, $50 offer? Or did you mean to put a K on there? 50K offer? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, so 
for, at least for us, Maureen and I, that, that one aspect paid off that uh, we were able to get that all worked out because that's something where I can tell you that the long-term goal for having the checkout system, and remember that was always the number one complaint from the, for, for the first three or four shows. It turned a lot of people off not being able to buy stuff immediately. And uh, so that was why we kind of embarked on the idea that we needed to put that programming in there. But, uh, you know, our goal with that is, uh, you know, to to promote those people using that system a little bit better, uh, you know, even more because we were able to set up that system where we get a small commission from the transactions that happen as a result of the show. And, you know, and if we can facilitate that and uh, and and also get a small cut of the, the sale, that works that works well for us. And, and in doing that, I want to work harder for the sellers who are trying to you know utilize that system because at the end of the day i think it provides a better experience for the buyers uh i'm i know i, I mean i would say show of hands how many people had to wait more than 30 minutes at least once for one piece that they made a purchase request for i mean i i, I would imagine most people had that happen at least one time especially at the beginning of the show um but let's see jason does say sellers have gotten much better at responding quickly well that's because Every email that I would send out to booth owners was always stressing timeliness and uh, responsiveness because that's that's what we need. You know, if we're gonna if it's gonna appear professional and uh, continue to have uh, you know a lasting staying power within the hobby, we need these sellers being the best. So Murdoch said four hours. Four hours was the the longest that uh, you had to wait for one. Um, some of my offer mails were caught in Gmail spam filter. EC, EC says, yeah, that does happen, unfortunately. And I don't know why Gmail does it, but they used to be really good. Comcast was always a problem with us in the past, but Gmail sometimes will spam stuff. It's, um, but as you know, I mean, I assume as everybody knows, I mean, I should be sure. Let me share a screen here. There's some things that I can always remind people about uh, as far as how to utilize their booths and whatnot, since we have a little bit of time left here. Where is that? Um, there we go. Yeah, see, I was on the uh, on the, the sale page to see the top sales as well. Uh, let's see. I thought I had a tab here with a booth. So uh, for those of you, I mean, and I mentioned this in the <clears throat> in some of the booth emails that I sent out in the last few days was that it's always a wise thing to go back to your your booth admin. Yeah, there's Berkey and his. Uh, uh, for leaf clover, but there's a there's the a link up here for email, and so you you can click that because every email that is sent from somebody to your uh, to the booth through you you know through to you, we actually record to the database. It's not part of of a uh, calf mail. It's in its own mail system. So you know if I click on that, uh, we should end up seeing. I see I only sent one test to myself, and gosh, when did I do that? I did it today or no yesterday. So bottom line is is that it's a good fallback. You know, if, if things were getting spammed on you, uh, it just doesn't hurt to go back and and check the the uh, mail that is coming into your booth from here, just to be sure something didn't get spammed because it'll happen. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way email works, right? And, uh, and again, Gmail has uh, been known to spam our emails before, so you know that's in there. I haven't checked out my uh, booth stats yet, but. You know, the one thing I mentioned a couple uh, hours ago in that last panel was, yeah, did anybody save anything in here for me? There you go. Somebody saved a uh, this blue book piece. So, uh, you know, this is a re uh, kind of a retargeting thing built into your booth. That if if I click on this one saved item, uh, it's not going to tell me who has saved it. You know, it just says one collector saved it. But this gives me the opportunity to send them an email. Maybe I've lowered the price from eight hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars. And uh, this is that opportunity to do it. You don't want to send out a dozen emails, you know, throughout the, the weekend if somebody has saved your stuff. But uh, like Dino mentioned in the, uh, the panel that we had, he had, I think, a dozen saves on his death piece. And once he decided to lower the price, he went in and did this. And he immediately had three or four people contact him about, you know, that piece. So again, you don't get to know who those people are, but you do get that opportunity to retarget their, uh, you know, their interests. And that's, uh, and, and, and let's see, and uh, what do we got? So we got a, a thumbs up here from uh, 
Gabadilla. The retargeting was a game changer. It's true. I mean, and, and, you know, cause at the end of the day, we want to help you sell and developing more tools and opportunities to do that, you know, is, uh, it's definitely, uh, been our agenda from the first show, you know, but as people are looking at this and knowing what we've done already, if you come up with ideas on how we can maybe, you know, build a better mousetrap with this and, and market your artwork better, I think that, uh, you know, we'll always be open to new ideas. Uh, let's see. So Murdoch mentioned that Yahoo mail was kittens. It, it is just what it is. Unfortunately, you know, you figure there's a lot of email leaving our mail server during the, this period. And sometimes it's just the level of, uh, emails going out that can actually get, uh, email tossed in the spam. You know, the G Gmail or the Yahoo sees X number of mails coming in, uh, per hour. And, you know, their algorithm says, uh, you know, flag certain ones. So, uh, I actually got a, a retargeted offer tonight as well <laughs> on the, um, what piece was it? Uh, the cosmic odyssey piece, uh, the, the price was lowered on it. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's one thing. Let's see. Uh, Murdoch has a quick suggestion. Can you add the ability to sort by dealer on the saved items page? Oh, that's not a bad idea. I can, I can make a note of that saved items again. And, you know, hit me with the ideas now or even after the fact, but, uh, but we are looking at, you know, uh, like I mentioned, I think I mentioned it live during that uh, last panel. I think we're going to fi find that we're going to have more updates between uh, the seventh and eighth virtual show that, and we've had from you know the first one to the seventh. Just because there's there's just a lot of loose ends, you know, and things that we've kind of overlooked and not done to the level that uh, really you know we should have. So sort by dealers. I mean, there could be things like sort sorting by dealers, sorting by price. Uh, you know, those sorts of things can happen. Yeah. Andy Fish is here. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Andy, for being our beta tester of the whole e-commerce system within this thing. Uh, let's see. Comment I got from art buyers who aren't CAF regulars. So they didn't like that. They had to fill out the form each time they contacted someone asked if there was a way to just stay signed in. Um, you know, that is, uh, th that, that's a good point, you know, for me. And I don't know. I mean, I, I had, you know, cause I just know how I use the internet don't don't whenever you go to a web form don't you just click on the name box and it literally wants to fill in everything for you because that's what i'm used to and i totally get where you're coming from mandy uh but the, you know the thing is i mean just and and there's a reason why i would never have thought to do this we don't store your uh, a person's physical address anywhere within the site related to your calf profile you know we, we don't have that so uh Let's see. I'm, I guess I'm missing some of the conversation here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so but anyways, uh, so they're always signed in. I guess I'm let me see. happy to do it. Worked really well overall. Uh, but I hope does that make sense that we don't store uh, a person's physical address anywhere? I mean, we could certainly we could make it where we it became an option. Like, would you like us to store your mailing address in uh, the system so that we can continue to use it. But for me, it's like whenever I, I mean, any, any web form out there, I always just click that first name field and, uh, you know, Chrome happily fills in the address, the city, state, zip, my phone number, my email address. And, uh, uh, I just pointed out where I actually said it wasn't working. What was, uh, at any rate, no, I, I I get you, Andy. I think what people, the thing is, because we don't store it, maybe people are expecting something a little different. And again, we can certainly do. Uh, it's something we can we can think about and move on. Uh, all right. So I, yeah, and Sam Maroney mentioned something about uh, where is it? Uh, suggest dealers clear, clearly indicate kind of medium uh, artisan. Uh, yep, I mean that's always good. Something we can always work better uh, towards. I think. Um, let's see here. TJ says it's funny. I always use progression keywords for search. Yep. Bazetta, same here. I double click on the field in Chrome. Right. But I, I do get it. And the thing is, it, it makes sense to allow your calf profile to store your mailing address if you want. It's just up until Comic Art Live, we've never had a need to store an address. So it's honestly, it's just never been a thought. Like I've never, I've never felt like I need to store a mailing address associated with a, with a user on the site, but you know, certainly 
times have changed. So that's something that we should, we can look into. Uh, let's see. Everybody else saying things about autofilling. I'm sorry, but I'm confused. The show was on calf. Alex Moreno. I'm sorry, but it's Alex Moreno. The, yeah, the show was on calf. Please explain. It's still on calf for another hour and a half, actually. Um, I can, it's easy enough to throw the link in there, Alex. Uh, <laughs> yes, the uh, Cox Fest. I know. I hear you. But um, here, let me, I got to just copy some links and things here. Yes. <laughs> Click here to enter. Yeah, you can't miss it. That's where, oh, that's true. I, I can just show you right on there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it is what it is. That's, uh, that is where the, uh, the show has been for the last seven uh, shows, right? Right on calf. Um, I think that comic art live is an event on comic art fans. It is. I, I say that all the time. <laughs> uh, it, if it was mega sized, it might have a better marketing department. You are absolutely right about that, Jason. So any new info on OAX in, in any of the panels, TJ? No, we didn't. Um, we did not talk about OAX too much this weekend. I mean, I had to stay focused on the show uh, and that, that I had right in front of me. Uh, you know, there will be a lot of uh, things happening now that uh, this show is passed where we can uh, talk more about OAX and, and whatnot. I mean, we're going to start. I intend to have the site up and running proper at the uh, for the first of June. We're going to start having ticket sales at that point. I've been getting, you know, some emails from people who want to exhibit other inquiries uh, from artists that want to attend. So so really, that's uh, going to be one of our main focuses after the show is over uh repost uh sorry you will be publishing the most sought after you oh sought after uh i don't know i guess I, that's something that we could think about but anyways I, you know, i'm sitting out here on this blue book retargeting page i guess we shouldn't we don't need to keep looking at that what else did i, I had some other windows open here um oh this was just site stats and a number of sales and things i don't know if uh those really changed a lot oh there you go um these were collector seller stats. Collectors uh, obviously made up the brunt of the sales, 703,000 uh, of pretty much we're at a million dollars in sales right now. So 70% of our sales came from collectors, uh, 433 sold items made up their 700,000 and uh, dealers were really a, a, a second place here. What do, what do they have? They had uh, 252,000 in sales from uh, just under a hundred uh, individual distinct sales. So, you know, I mean, this is definitely a collector show at the end of the day, as far as uh, looking at that. Oh, uh, Adam, you were $700 of that. All right. Um, the uh, So Murdoch would like to know the top 10 saved items. You know, the thing is, it was funny. Dino had mentioned, uh, you know, the idea of looking at top saved items and filtering by that. And I thought maybe we had talked about that, but clearly we didn't. Because if you look at the sort by, we only have, uh, you can sort by price highest to lowest, views highest to lowest, and then uh, title of, of the uh, artwork from A to Z, Z to A. I don't even, you know, that's almost kind of like not even needed. But it would be kind of cool to have something in here that allowed you to sort by most liked or most saved, I'm sorry, most saved uh, would be interesting because I do not have a way of looking at that as far as I know. It made, when, when Dino said it, it made me think that, but I think maybe what he was saying was when he looks at the artwork in his uh, booth, it's really easy for him to see the most saved item. I mean, and more than likely he probably had it, but, uh, but yeah, you get the idea there. But this, uh, the sort that's on here is um, top sold items by, uh, by price. So that was at 584. So another nine items have sold since we've been live. Uh, the Trad Moore, the uh, Miracle Man piece uh, by Mick Austin that Dino had. Another Dino piece, the George Perez Crisis page. Uh, the, uh, let's see, X-Men 156 end page sold for 21,500. Uh, I got the uh, McSpidey fan sold a $18,000 Todd McFarlane piece. Congrats to you, McSpidey. And a uh, nice Warlock. Very nice Warlock 1976 page of Starlin Leia Loa went for 18. And uh, obviously, I, hey, look at my piece. I, put, I spent the top seven. Ugh. Yeah, I'm going to be thinking about that tomorrow when I write the check and get it in the mail. But um, 
but yeah okay and there's uh bill everett this was from cool lines that's interesting the price is back in there i thought he had zeroed that one out maybe i'm mistaken on that but uh mike had a sale in there with the massafera mike did not sell all the massaferas last i saw he sold seven of them so seven of 18 i can't remember what he had but he did sell quite a few and i do know that uh that uh, the star wars one was the one that uh, this one right here this one got a whole lot of interest uh, it was very very desirable so uh yeah but uh, but it would be interesting to see about the safe stuff i i, I actually already had that one uh down right uh, before the show even started because of uh, dino's mentioning about it that uh, you know i want to be able to order by uh, most saved because again, that, that that gives you a little bit of information about what your your peers are uh, are interested. The most views kind of helps too, right? But um, I think when people are saving it, that's a bit more of a commitment. I think. Um, wait, which page did I buy? I bought the uh, uh, the. I can throw it in here. Let's see. I bought this page right here. The end page to X Men 150, Uncanny X Men 150, by Dave Cockrum. So I have, like I mentioned earlier, I've righted the wrong. The mini golf is in the, the rearview mirror, and uh, that uh, you know I, I had to sell four or five of the Cockrum Uncanny pages that I used to own, and now I've uh, gotten this one. I don't need to buy another one. I've I've fixed that uh, big mistake that I made 14 years ago. So, but I saw it and I just had to have it. And it was one of those ones that I couldn't let, uh, couldn't let it go. Uh, well, okay. So fish, you know, th there's the con to showing things about most safe fish says most safe gives other people access to your hard work, finding the good page. It's good for sellers, but not ideal for buyers and hunters. Well, that is true. That is true. You're, you're, uh, piggybacking on the, the efforts of, uh, of, uh, your fellow collectors. So, yeah, I mean, it is something to think about. Maybe that's why we didn't do it at first. I can't really say. But um, a hole in one, <laughs> says Mikhail. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Um, but, I, but I get where you're coming from. At, you know, so it's, but it's a, it's a dilemma, right? It, everything's data at the end of the day. And everybody l tends to like more data than less data. So uh, it's, uh, but it'll be something to think about. I get it. I, I understand that. Uh, uh, but maybe it's something we do after the show. I mean, at the very very least, it would be easy enough to do it then. But uh, during the show, I don't know. I'll think about it. I will definitely think about it. And, but it is uh, it is on my list. Um, let's see. Larry said, I think if a hot item was for sale with a hot price, it's getting bought before it's being saved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm certain of that. I mean, that, that Darth Vader Masa Farah cover, it didn't get marked sold right away because uh, Mike was at a funeral and he texted me about three hours into the show. And he's like, two guys are texting me saying that they uh, ordered the piece. They want to make sure they got it. Can you go in and just mark it as sold for me <laughs> and I'll deal with it when I get home. So, uh, so I, I did, I had to log in as him and get into his, his booth and I could see that he, he had about six emails about it in the first three hours. So yeah, he could have definitely, um, you know, sold it more, more than once if he could. Uh, uh, Black Viper Adorn says, actually, now that I think about it as a seller, I would r really want everyone knowing the piece only had one save when we, uh, well, that's true too. And, you know, and maybe, you know, that point right there, I think is why we, why we don't show that data anywhere because it gives, uh, it, it works both ways. Um, you know, that the, uh, if a piece has no saves, you know that there's no interest on it and as a buyer you've got leverage over the seller so uh yeah you know it's it's funny it's a deja vu i think we've we've had this conversation before so maybe an after show sort of thing if we want to look at stats on things you know maybe maybe it's something we will put out there once the show is over uh, uh andy fish and there yeah andy that's a that's a very good point because as everybody knows today when you're negotiating your sale uh, you know, there's the back and forth, and then you've got to go back into your booth and edit the item and mark it sold. With uh, Andy and Veronica's booth, they it automatically marked everything as sold. And the cool thing is going to be is that when it comes time to leave feedback, that's already uh, it's already tagged to the person who bought it. 
And, uh, you know, as everybody knows, when you're first leaving feedback as a seller to a buyer, if you got six emails from somebody about, say, this X-Men piece and you marked it as sold, it's going to be in your list to uh, to leave feedback for it. But you would then have to pick from the six people that emailed you their name and leave their feedback. And then that person can leave feedback for you. The great thing with the checkout system is that it does it all for you. And uh, as it should, you know, as any uh, real true marketplace with an actual checkout would you would expect it to do for you. So that is a time saver. You don't have to do any editing in your booth unless you're going to be lowering prices or, you know, amending some data in there. Uh, OK, so Larry said most saved after show would be best. And uh, I'm just going to make that note there, too, because I, I, I agree. I mean, you want you want to give out some. So so most views is a fair thing to put out there for people uh, as a sort mechanism within the uh, overall site search. So maybe we have it right. <laughs> I feel like uh, we've we've done this thing once before. So uh, so there you have it. I think we probably won't need to do any special programming to this keyword search um, unless something special comes up. Uh, Alberto says, maybe I'm weird, but I want uh, what do you want? But if I want a page, I just buy it. I don't save it and risk losing it. Well, that's <laughs> some of us like to, you know, it's it's like watching an art drop on on the stream, right? There's a, I think there's a a set group of people when you're watching like next comic arts drop last night, where unless you see a piece you just gotta have, you're gonna wait until most of the pieces are shown to you know before pulling the trigger. I mean, we see that happen quite a bit. And uh, even in dueling dealers nowadays, we, it, we've we come to expect waiting for the recap, uh, you know, to renegotiate and things. So it doesn't uh, happen a lot. But Alberta, like you, when I saw that X-Men page, I, I did have to sleep on it. I, mean, I, I will say that. And and the thing is, you know, I saw it when we were doing our tests. I always search on X-Men when I'm running tests on the whole, uh, the whole system. And uh, I did actually um, email the seller and I said, uh, I just want you to know, I may, I may be buying something I may not. I didn't tell them even what. I just said that, I just want you to know that if I send you a purchase request tomorrow, you do not think it's a test because because uh, I've done that in the past, run run tests after the show launched. I don't think, probably not with that guy, but I said, I just want you to know it won't be a test. So um, so I, I waited till the show opened and, uh, you know, and, and but I, I knew, you know, by the morning I was like, all right, I, I'm going to pull the trigger on this. And I, and I went out and I finally did it. But, but the thing was like, you know, when some, usually, you know, it does, I get where Alberto's coming from. When you see something, you know, you want to have, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's easier to pull the trigger. Uh, Margaret, did Margaret buy anything this weekend? That's, that is a question. What, do, what did Margaret have to say? Uh, I was all, I only pulled the trigger right away if it's something I absolutely want. Uh, if it's just a page, I maybe see, uh, I get it. Right. I mean, that's uh, I've still saved a few items that I'm still considering picking up. But uh, Josh does want to know, Margaret, if you picked up that Hembeck Legion. So um, let's see what else we got there. I sat on Dodson's X-Men page for almost two days. Mur Murdoch said that's uh, that's a good again. It's everybody's got their own philosophy. Right. I mean, we've sat on, uh, you know, we talk about facts. You know, you've looked at something on a dealer's site for three years and then finally decide to pull the trigger. Um, you know, when we did the panel with uh, Anthony this morning, I forget which buyer that was. May have been, might have been EC, who was at, who had a had something that uh, they they did they worked out the deal with. But then they remembered a piece that they had always been looking at for years on Anthony's site, and uh, you know, you almost feel like you own it after a while uh, of uh, you know looking at pieces that are out there, stewing on it, and um, and then uh, you end up losing out sometimes. Um, anyway, let's keep uh, looking at the chat as far as what we've got. Um, Alberto says, I'm the same on regular shipping. I saved a few pieces that I'm tempted to go after. Right, Michael Avila. Good for you. I mean, you still got uh, an hour and 15 minutes to do that. Um, I will let everybody know this because we do, a lot of the items in the menu go away underneath Comic Art Live here. But uh, we will leave the My Saved Artworks uh link in there so most of the stuff is going to go away but uh when the show is over we modify what this uh links to so if i go over there right now it's it's linking me into the uh the booths that are out there but um <clears throat> when the show is over the link for say james name is going to take you over to james calf gallery 
because you can't get into the exhibitor hall anymore. So if you see something that wasn't marked as sold, because from your view of, uh, so I do have a filter on here. What was that filter? It's uh, okay. It doesn't filter on seller filters on price or date. Um, like on the uh, piece that I bought, you know, it'll be marked as sold. So you can come over here after the show and uh, see which pieces are marked as sold or not. And the link will allow you to go over to David I am fans uh, calf gallery and email them through there and ask them if the piece is still available or if it's still for sale. You never know. Maybe after the show is over, they, they don't want to sell it, but it does allow you to kind of go back. And uh, uh, now Alberto asked about the email sent link. You know, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think we'll leave that in there. Uh, you know, again, this is something I mentioned before the show. Right. I, I think I talked about it on uh, Friday or maybe the, the kickoff on Saturday. There was the email sent, which allowed you see the only email I sent. Look at that right there at 11. See, so, you know, I'm honest, everybody. I waited until the show opened and uh, sent the email for the piece. I mean, I did it right as it opened, of course. So I, I did have uh, that going for me. But uh, but honestly, at 11, <laughs> everything was falling apart and uh, it was good that I got it out of the way right really quickly. But uh, but yeah, I think we'll go ahead and just and leave the email sent in there because it does give you a record of, uh, uh, you know, whom you reached out to, which is uh, which is good. So, yeah, I'll, I, uh, I'll make a note of that, too. So I don't forget email sent. I will leave that link in there, too. OK, uh, but yeah, I think all the rest of the emails or the links underneath there don't need to be there or can't be there. Panels, exhibitors, uh, saved artworks, saved exhibitors, um, email sent. Yep. Uh, yeah, we'll pull all that stuff out other than those two things. Uh, right. So, uh, let me see anything else here to talk about, but, but yeah, but back to, you know, the things that we, that I mentioned, you know, the big changes that we need to, uh, muck our way through before the next show is, uh, you know, like if you go in the dealer hall, I mean, you can see, we took out the three preview items because, you know, in my opinion, that was part of the slowdown issues we were having. But I do feel like this, this layout and the whole structure will be modified a little bit. I mean, it, just probably a little bit cleaner and uh, streamline it because, you know, it's, these pages should still load really fast. And at the end of the day, they don't, uh, you know, they don't load to the speed that, uh, you know, we're all accustomed to. Uh, any idea how many unique CAF members participated? Not just yet, Bob, uh, but um, we run stats every week, every, every Sunday night at uh, midnight, I run a, a query that lets me know how many uh, users have logged in that week and uh, posted art, those sorts of things. So, so uh, maybe on the CAF update, I will take a look and show that to everybody. I mean, it's, a, it's just something that allows me to, uh, and I, and I can show it here. I don't, I don't mind. It's uh, it's secret privileged information, but we're all, uh, we're all in this together. Where the heck is that? My site stats, weekly login stats. Uh, we just kind of keep track of uh, different data there from which users are logging in. And uh, so I'll have a uh, update from those figures after uh, after Sunday at midnight. So, yeah, there's, um, you know, I'll have a better feel for the number of people who are actually uh, CAF members that logged in. Of course, remember, the show is open to the general public and even the general public not having a CAF account can communicate with everybody in their booth because we didn't want to limit it, you know, for better or worse. I mean, I, you know, I say it now and I think well, we should force people to have a CAF account if they're going to communicate with you through CAF. Uh, but for the show, we never did. So, uh, yeah, that's something I should probably think about. Uh, oh, TJ says, see, TJ, that's what happened. TJ said, I forgot to log into CAF as I found a piece this afternoon. I was wondering why. Uh, it wasn't uh, gathering my information to email. Yeah, that would be why. Um, and what else we got there? Michael Avila says, I'd be curious to find out how many people sold multiple pieces. This was my first time selling art on CAF Live, and I sold three. Quite happy about that, but I'm guessing others wanted to sell more. Uh, yeah, I mean, let me see if I can show something without showing too much information. But um, let's see. I mean, it, you know, I'm just going to kind of this column right here, just so you can see this column is sold people who sold something. This is like their total amount in their booth. 
this column is when they've actually got sold data. So you can see by and large, most sellers have something, but there are quite a few uh, sellers who didn't sell anything. And uh, I'm scrolling through this quickly enough so that you can't uh, really stop and read any of it. But the point being is that, you know, there are quite a few sellers who sold three, five, seven, six, five, uh, three, five, seven, five. I'm not seeing any double digits. Oh, 18. Well, I, you know, that's a solid one right there. So, you know, there are some sellers, uh, eight, six, four. I can tell you, um, if I swing back, well, I won't, I won't do it. But, I, you know, the thing is, uh, Mr. Mike Vosberg exhibited for the first time um, this show. And obviously, I've had him on a couple sales shows. He sold a whole lot of art. <laughs> let's see here. I mean, we'll just go over to his booth and take a look at it. Um, let's see. It should be the last one on the list, right? Here we go. Mike Vosberg. So uh, he had 48 artworks for sale. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. He sold 50% of what he brought. He brought 48 artworks. He sold 24 artworks during the weekend. And how great is that? I mean, I can't tell you how happy I am for Mike that uh, he did that. That's that's fantastic. Um, you know, and this is why we need to encourage more artists to be a part of this show, right? Um, you know, Mike, I, I forget. I mean, I've, I've helped him sell our work in the live streams, but I don't remember if he has a site that uh, he does his sales through. So something like this is a great opportunity for him. And clearly it worked damn well. I bet you he had the most sales of anybody, 24 sales over the weekend. Uh, Jason says he sold five out of 19. Very happy. I think we were looking at Brit Comics Art uh, earlier today. He sold a five of nine that he brought. Um, you know, uh, Berkey sold seven of uh, however many Masaberas he brought, if that was the number. Um, you know, so, so yeah, so a lot of people did sell multiples. But as you can see from that list that we scrolled through, probably 30% of the, the collectors who sold uh, or who set up did not sell anything. And... Um, and, you know, and I can't really, you, know, you can't really say why that is. I mean, you go back and analyze it. Maybe uh, all they brought were Betty and Veronica art, and we didn't have any Betty and Veronica buyers here at the show this weekend, right? I mean, you, you never know, or price too high, or obscure titles, or whatever, you know, you, you just don't know. But, uh, but Jason, how many pieces did you buy this weekend through Comic Art Live? You sold five of the 19 that you brought, but how many pieces did you pick up for yourself, if any? I did see, Jason, that that uh, John Romita Jr. X-Men page sold, so I'm happy for you on that one. I was testing uh, this one page of Jason's a lot before the show opened, and he, he knew it because his view count was going up on this one piece. And he asked me if I was interested in it, and I said, well, it's actually my, that's my, been my test piece for the, for the week. Um, but uh, And Margaret says she was happy to see that a lot of sellers were uh, clear about their shipping options. Well, that was a change this time around, actually. Uh, so Jason says he's bought one so far. Um, one of the things that we added, and not everybody used it, uh, or they just overlooked it, or I don't know how that's possible. But um, let's see, back in my uh, my booth, as part of the, you know, now this is the your booth admin page. But as part of the booth kind of setup details, um, we put in a field for domestic and international shipping. And, you know, of course, mine set $1 and $2. So that would have, I would have been in trouble if I would have sold any artwork this weekend because it was still left to my testing data. But uh, when you're in my booth then, not on the main, main booth page, but when you're on an item, we actually, in, in the description area, and I, you know, I, I guess I could hop over and, uh, well, let's see, whose booth are we in? Uh, no, it would have actually appeared right here. So you can tell that uh, W Grief did not fill in those fields because it would actually say shipping right here uh, and then the price for U.S. international. And then if you uh, if you filled any information, because you, you could actually write a description about what your shipping methods or models are, it would have shown both of those, uh, all three of those line items here. But it, it would have had a uh, header that said shipping right there for uh, for you to see that. There's got to be somebody who uh, who did it. It's... Nope. So Jeff Don didn't do it either. So it's not there. See, you well, know, that that's just it. A new feature. There we go. Look right there. So uh, uh, Mr. Lovitz, he saw those fields and he entered them. Domestic shipping thirty, 
International 60, and he was able to add the note that shipping for non-artwork items to be determined. We can discuss options before setting shipping fees. So there you go. Um, that was uh, something we added because in part uh, we needed to do it um, as for Andy and Veronica, for instance, because now they've got a live checkout in there. We need to be able to put the, the proper shipping on the pieces when uh, they're being bought. So putting those fields in there are, were kind of really necessary, but I think it, it gives us a, everybody kind of a standard to follow. Although one person told me they wanted to literally put a different shipping amount per piece because they were going to factor in insurance for it. So more power to them. If that was what they wanted to do, I just said, don't put anything in those fields on the profile and update the description for every piece of artwork. Uh, no, there was not an on hold option. We have actually never added one. I mean, how many people think we need an on hold option in there? Uh, you know, cause I could do that. We could certainly do that. I'm not sure why we've opted not to have an on hold option. I can tell you all the dealer booths always, you know, they do have those three options for sale on hold or sold. Um, but, uh, uh, we've kind of left it out and I'm not, I don't remember why, what the methodology was. Uh, $50 domestic. Well, I'm Canadian and 50 is actually, uh, <laughs> all right. Everybody says we, you know, I'm seeing a, a, a show of hands that people would like to see. So, okay, we've got an on hold and a no hold. Um, Simon Ma says a bit late to the chat. Sorry. Has anyone mentioned the ridiculously underpriced, uh carol day uh right i guess i didn't see that page simon um let's see for what artwork is reserved but buyer hasn't paid i mean i get what you're saying uh bronze is gold because otherwise you end up just leaving it as uh, uh leaving the item as for sale and you continue to get requests on it and if you mark it as sold you high you know you discourage anybody from inquiring um we could certainly set it to on hold and allow people to still contact you. You know, I guess that would be the ideal situation for you as a seller. So that way, at least they know someone is definitely ahead of them that you're negotiating with, but they could also send you a, uh, uh, an inquiry about it. And, uh, so I'll have to search that, uh, the Carol day that, um, oh, it should be an easy one to find. Let's see. But you no, know, the, from what, what, what I heard the, you know, the, the ridiculously low piece was from uh, Jeffrey Moy at a Joe Mad uh, piece. Okay, so here was the one, the David uh, Wright Carol Day that sold for four hundred thirty dollars. You know, I, I actually have no idea what the Carol Day market is is like. So four hundred thirty seems really, really reasonable to me. So I guess uh, uh, Simon is agreeing on that one. So that uh, four hundred thirty was a good price. I mean, I love I, I love David Wright stuff. And, uh, huh, well, that was a good deal. Seller who France didn't initially, okay. Uh, sorry, just reading through. Where would on hold show up in the search for sale? Uh, George is asking. Um, no, that's a good question. I guess um, it would probably still be under the for sale because it's not sold. Sold is a very de definite uh, thing, but I would think on hold, still since it would still allow the buyer to contact the seller to say hey if you if it falls if the deal falls apart i'm here i think on hold should appear with the items that are still for sale so it's not sold until it's sold hold doesn't mean much until you are paid uh so okay i mean it's a i i, I don't mind adding it at the end of the day and i don't mind doing my best to educate the exhibitors about it as well uh, give give the seller the option to put it on hold. An automatic on hold would be abused. <clears throat> okay. No. Well. I, I, hey, I'll highlight it. I've got my yellow highlighter too. I've already written a note about it, and I'll make that a priority. I'm making the show the most saves uh, after the show is over a priority. Some better sort options on your saved list is a uh, priority. Um, Let's see, maybe change the header to uh, hold so people can send a request. No, yeah, if it was on hold, we would still let the uh, buyers continue to send you requests for that piece. Um, you know, they just, but they're aware that the, you are in negotiations already, which is a good thing. I mean, the sellers, uh, and all the dealer sites that I make, they have the, the three options for sale, on hold, or sold. And when something is on hold, they can still get communicated uh, by uh, potential buyers. So same thing works here. 
Um, yeah, nope, I, I, I get it. That makes sense to me. Um, and, and, it, and I should remind everybody too, uh, the email will probably go out tomorrow, but I know that a lot of sellers end up having negotiations, you know, for days, right? I mean, they're not looking okay, not a lot of days. Say it started on Saturday. You don't finish it till Monday, or maybe you don't finish it till Tuesday or Wednesday. The booth editing is still available. And I would sincerely appreciate it that uh, those sellers who have not uh, marked their items as sold uh, because they're for whatever reason, you're too busy right now. You can't do it till tomorrow or uh, you're finishing a deal two days from now. Please go back in and mark those items as sold because probably on Tuesday or Wednesday, I will send you a, uh, a basically a summary of the data that we think happened on your booth. We, you know, cause we're tracking the number of views that your, your items got. We want you to see that, uh, you know, that we feel there's value in setting up as an exhibitor. So we'll, you know, we'll say you got this many emails, you got this many views. It says you sold this many items. You know, you brought these this many items, you sold this many. We we want to give you those metrics. So to, to have accurate sales data for us, uh, you've got to kind of do your part as far as, uh, uh, you know, finishing off the data on your side of things. Any fish says, how about eliminating the ability to market price? Zero. Uh, you know, the cool thing was, Andy, uh, you know, that, you know, I was expecting it to be, uh, you know, because every single show, we always seem to have like 50 or 60 people that were marking things as uh, zero after they sold it, right? So I thought I was on a search page here, but maybe not. Uh, I've got too many windows open again. Uh, let's just go poke around here for a minute. Um, let's see for the miss. Okay, I got a mystery sketch question there. Let me. What was the mystery sketch question from Jason? Uh, do they stay a mystery until they are delivered to the customer? <clears throat> Well, I mean, I could tell you Mark Hay was sending out uh, texts while he was in Italy every time he got one and he let the buyers know, probably if he had, uh, uh, you know, if he knew the buyer, uh, you know, because I know uh, Mikhail got a got a text from him. Uh, Mark told me he sent the, the images that we showed on, um, uh, what was it, on Friday from Mark's, we sold, I think we showed like six of them. He had already sent those out to uh, to people just to let them know which pieces were theirs. Um, you know, Jiggy's going to end up sending me all of his artist's pieces. I think they had around 55. You know, we'll do an unboxing at that point, so you'll see them then. Uh, but, you know, let me get over to here. So let me switch this to sold, and I'm going to sort by lowest first. We'll see what that comes up with. So how many zeroed out items do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, and nine. Well, eight. See, only eight. Eight items got switched to zero. So that's actually good because in past shows, we'd have over 100. Uh, Mikhail said, uh, yeah, German, uh, German Peralta did some really, really great commissions uh, for the mystery sketch. And, uh, and I can tell you... In, let me, let me mention that because I got a couple emails and, and I completely agree with them. I sent out too many emails this weekend, everybody. Um, and uh, I don't want it to ever feel like I'm spamming you guys. And I, I definitely did that to a certain extent. And I have to apologize for that. And you know, the reason I did it was because I, I was actually getting nervous uh, on Saturday, Saturday evening. Um, you know, like I said, we're, I'm sure we're at a million dollars in sales right now, given, you know, given the fact that we've been talking for about an hour. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, at, at 1130 last night, we were only at 430,000 in sales. And I was starting to think this, uh, this is the show where we actually don't hit our marks. Right. And I was getting scared and I went and I looked over at Mark's booth and I looked over at Tatiana's booth and I looked at over at and, and I looked to the booths to the people who've been supportive on the live streams and supportive on the mystery sketches and I got concerned and so you know I thought about different ways to uh try to drive a little traffic to certain sellers and I probably went a little overboard today you know because I sent out an email for Mark I sent out an email for Jiggy Tatiana uh, uh Jeff M art sales you know several people um, I know Rob T says he didn't mind the emails and, I, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't, but a, a couple people did and they did email me. So, uh, you know, I'm going to think a bit more about how to do that because those emails really should have went out on, uh, Saturday and 
I need to come up with better ways to do that. But I do think they helped. I mean, I, I sent out an email for Andy and Veronica. And immediately after the email went out, I think they had three of the commission sell. So um, I'm hoping that for Jiggy and for Mark and Tatiana and uh, uh, I can't even remember all the, you know, I, I, there were about six or seven emails I sent this morning. But again, it, it was born out of the concern I had with the people who I feel put a lot of trust and faith in us to get things done. And I, it was a knee jerk reaction. So, I, you know, I, I live and learn. Um, I will uh, I'll find a better way to do it next time. <clears throat> but back to German Peralta, his work is fantastic. And uh, he's under Mark Hayes uh, booth. So if you, you know, if you, if, even if you don't consider uh, commissioning him for this particular show, it's a name that, you know, you should look to because he's, uh, he does great work. And when Kyle, I wish I had the image, Mikhail, I'd, I'd show it, but I've got it over on my other computer. But um, uh, it's just a, you know, a, a great, great talent. And, uh, did, and for these pieces, did an amazing, amazing uh, help. So Andy says it really helped. And, and again, but when you think about that, it, it, it shows you that, the, you know, we, we, there are ways for us to market better uh you know for everybody it's just uh, you know i just was picking and choosing whom i was working harder for so uh let's see andy says uh, bill i want a talking alarm clock that is you giving me the cap update for the day uh yeah i hear you man um so so anyway but i'm glad it worked i felt like it would work but you know Either we need to find ways to kind of maybe a little bit more, maybe passively, there's better ways that we can do that and just keep reminding people throughout the show. You know, it's, I think we'll come up with a lot of uh, good ideas between Maureen and I, uh, you know, in the next week or two to, to think about, but I, I would encourage everybody to throw, uh, you know, ideas my way as well. You know, the, you know, I always say it, bill at comic card fans, com. email me uh, anything that, uh, you know, any ideas that come up because no ideas are bad. Um, use a mass texting service, says Jason. Yeah, I mean, I kind of thought I've looked, we've looked into doing some of that, but, um, and Alberto says it's easy to deal. I, I, you know, delete stuff. I get it. I get it. And I get, but the thing is, you have to look at it both ways. I get why some people complain too. So, you know, I, I, I apologize to each person who, uh, to the two people who emailed me saying they got too many emails the last uh, 48 hours. Uh, Greg McKee liked them. Well, I, I, the thing is, I felt they were informative, but, um, you know, and, and oh, and, right. I sent out, remember, I sent out an email for uh, Nick Klein, his panel, because he had art for sale. I sent out an email for uh, Apollo's panel because he had art for sale. And, at the, you know, at the end of the day, again, these people are putting their, uh, they put time into the show and I want to make sure we do good for them. So, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. At any rate, I, I'm not going to talk anymore about it. Friendly spam. Uh, Calf has never spammed Andy. I appreciate hearing that. Uh, <laughs> I like getting calf emails. Okay, well, I get it. I get it. Some people don't. Um, but uh, but I did, you know, to, to a certain extent, I could have metered those emails a little bit better. I was sending it to the full list when I was sending them out. I could have sent them just to the PR list. For those of you who don't know how... Uh, the, you know, our mailing lists are set up. We, we actually do have, uh, it's a little bit granular. You can either get them all <clears throat> or you can literally just say, I want, I want the Friday email, you know, or I want uh, to get the daily email or I want to get, I don't mind getting PR email. So if, if I'm saying things to you that you, you feel like you're missing out on, when you get an email that one of our uh, regular ones, go to the bottom of the email. There's a link to manage your preferences for that account. And uh, there's checkboxes to kind of set up what emails you want to get from us. And, uh, uh, you know, heck, I'd encourage you to check them all, but I get it if you don't. Like the one person who complained showed me, he's like, I've got it set to only get this one email. And I got a dozen emails this weekend. And I, you know, and, he, and I'm like, well, you're, you're probably right. I probably should have just sent it to one segment, not all. But anyway, I won't beat that one to death any longer. Uh <laughs> Uh, yes, I know, Chuck. I know what, you know, people on the internet complaining, <clears throat> but, uh, it is what it is. I, I don't mind it. Opt in. It is all opt in. It's just, uh, anyway. All right. I'm not going to talk about email <laughs> anymore. Um, what else do I got here from the show? I think, honestly, I think I've kind of covered everything that I, I wanted to talk about. You guys have one less than an hour now. 
to get back in there and um, you know finish up some purchases, uh, maybe try to negotiate uh, one more sale. And uh, you know I don't want to keep you guys from it. Let's see. Uh, you know I'm I'm still looking at the email stuff. Uh, <laughs> 98 watching and only 56 likes. I mean that is criminal. That is criminal, Nick. Um, so uh, anyway, I'm not going to keep you guys anymore, but you know, as thoughts come to you over the next few days, please, uh, you know, send them, send them my way. Um, all I can promise you is that, you know, we won't have that uh, one issue ever happen again. Maureen and I have that worked out, uh, you know, what happened on Saturday and, and what happened on Sunday was just an accident from what happened on Saturday. So it's, Sunday will never happen again either. Uh, I will sleep well tonight, Mikhail. When the, as soon as the the, uh, the hall closes in an hour, I've just got a few things to change. I have to go in and get rid of the, you know, the the listings up here at the top, and uh, get rid of the click here to enter and a few minor tweaks to the site. But uh, I think I will sleep very well tonight. That is uh, that is for sure. Um, and uh, Josh says that overall great weekend. Thanks and appreciate the thoughtful reply. Yeah. It is what it is. Thank you, Josh. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I really, uh, I've said it, I, and I really mean it, you know, we're all in this together. I mean, and it, if it wasn't for you guys being here and participating in the stuff that we think, is, you know, the hobby needs or wants, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be any fun for us either. So I appreciate the fact that so many people are, uh, you know, are invested in uh, these things on CAF that, uh, you know, that I've come to, to love and appreciate more than a, more than ever. You know, we've talked about that a lot. I mean, the last three years have meant a, a great deal to uh, myself, my entire family, and uh, I've enjoyed getting to hang out with everybody here and uh, and make something that I think we'll we're going to remember for a long time. You know, these these twice annual events and uh, in the future, uh, the OAX shows. I think they're going to be uh, I think they're going to become very important as well. Like I said, I got reached out by somebody who I think is pretty important. Uh, that I had never emailed with before who, uh, who heard about it and uh, wants me to wants to set up a, a call this week to talk about um, you know the potential for doing it, you know this, this show and what their you know philosophy is on it. And uh, I think that's cool. I mean, having a, a, an important comic creator uh, see the value in something that, uh, that I think is going to be important too is, uh, is pretty pretty nice. And you guys have been there all along seeing it, but um, I think that you know, that's my goal is, you know, to leave something positive for us all. And, uh, and again, without you guys here, where would we be? So, uh, Brent, uh, you wanted to know about getting back to pieces we saved. I did cover that earlier, but, um, I, right here, I can just go back over to here. Uh, we're going to show you a tab here, you know, underneath comic art live, there is a, my saved artworks link that, uh, while most of these links are going to go away right after 10 o'clock tonight, the My Saved Artworks link will stay. However, so anyway, if I click on it, uh, you you won't be able to click on these links to get to the pieces. You'll still be able to see the thumbnails. You'll still be able to see all the artwork details under it, but the uh, they will link to the to like in this case right here with with the Dazzler page. They're going to link over to James Siegel's Calf Gallery um, within the site. So his his Calf Gallery, not his exhibitor booth. So that allows you. To go back to uh, James and say, "Man, I, I I saved it. I should have gotten back with you, but is that Dazzler page still available? You know, and will you take a uh, hundred dollars off or whatever? You know the deal. Everybody knows how the how we how things are played. But bottom line is, is yes, your calves, uh, your your calf live. See, now I'm even calling it Comic Art Fans Live. Your your Comic Art Live saved artworks will still be there." You'll just have to communicate with each seller through their calf gallery after that. So uh, uh, do that. James Siegel. <laughs> yeah, my James, James is happy to sell that piece to me for $100 less. Uh, all right. Well, I do have a Dazzler page by Springer and Coletta, uh, James. And if I, but if I didn't, I, you know, I might consider that page. Uh, where can we buy tickets for the in-person show next year, Rob? Uh, it will. Well, you'll, you'll get that uh, information. We're, the tickets are going to go on sale June 1st. They will be through our uh, the website, which is located at oa-expo.com. Right now, there's just kind of a placeholder page up there that just gives an overview of uh, what the show is about and, and everything. But on June 1st, which will be a Thursday, I'm, I'm planning on launching the ticket sales and the hotel block to everyone uh, in two weeks you know, on that uh, June 1st. 
during the calf live show. So that's, uh, that's when everything will go live and we'll, we'll make it, uh, make it, make it available to everybody, you know, and we're going to try to add some fun stuff in there, you know, to the first hundred people that buy tickets, those sorts of things. Cause you know, we're going to putting on a show isn't cheap. You know, I'm, I'm not expecting to make any money at all on this. And I, you know, I, but I want to make sure that we make a great show. So for us having some ticket sales early, will definitely help us uh, be able to, you know, finance some of the things that we need to get done to get things started. But that's, that's the plan. June 1st for that uh, ticket sales and the hotel block. And, um, and we'll be able to, you know, be able to show you a little bit more of our plans for the show. VIP experience. Yes. The, the, in the VIP room, Marcus, there will be that, uh, Larry will be at the show and everybody's got my back. I appreciate it, everybody. But listen, I don't want to keep you again. We've got uh, 45 minutes left to go here. So, you know, I would encourage you to get in there and, uh, you know, try to find things you haven't seen already like them so that you can always come back and reference this uh, saved artwork uh, page so you can communicate with the sellers after the show is over and sellers please 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 keep things updated throughout the next two or three days mark your stuff sold uh, as you sell it and uh, when i send my emails out to you in uh, the next few days that cover the stats for your booth correct me if anything isn't right so uh, if you do that i'll be uh, happy as a camper so all right everybody Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you so much for making this uh, seventh comic art live a success. Uh, you know, it, it would not be a show without all of your support as both buyers and exhibitors selling artwork here and participating in the panel. So, uh, you know, my, my uh, heartfelt thanks for everything that you do to keep this uh, this thing afloat. I uh, uh, I appreciate it. I have no shows Monday and Tuesday. I'm taking those days off. So the next time you'll see me will be on Wednesday with the Dueling Dealers of Comic Art. So uh, I'll see you again 